Hey, what's up everyone? So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Magna Guard from the Clone Wars. So these guys appeared in several episodes of the Clone Wars. We also saw them in Revenge of the Sith, and they appeared in several other forms of Star Wars media. Super cool droid, and I think the figure looks really good. And of course, this comes in the plastic-free galaxy packaging. Star Wars The Black Series up top. Here we have a render of the Magna Guard. It's okay. It's kind of a silly pose, but... It's fine, and we have Star Wars The Clone Wars and Magna Guard. On this side of the box, you get a picture of what's inside, so you get the figure. He stands at 6.2 inches tall, and if that is true, that would make him a little short. He should be about 6.5 inches tall, but I don't know, we'll see. comes with two different versions of the Electro Staff. Here we have plastic-free packaging, and there's the side with the artwork. That is a cool picture. Love this picture. You can see some battle droids in the background, but yeah, that is awesome right there. Got this kind of yellowish color for the Clone Wars line. There's nothing on the top and on the bottom. Barcode, small print, and logos. And there's the back of the box. Same render as the front. You got a short bio in five different languages. The Magna Guard's number 15 in the Clone Wars line. You have some more small print down there. And the bio just says, Magna Guards, implacable droids who guarded key Separatist leaders, proved tough opponents for the Jedi with their deadly Electro Staffs. They could even keep fighting even after... Who writes these things? They could even keep fighting even after losing limbs or heads. All right, I'm going to get the Magna Guard out of the box, and let's see how many times his shoulders fall off. Okay, so here is the Magna Guard, also known as the IG-100 Magna Guard, out of the box. And I must say, this figure looks amazing. I love the way it looks. Now, the shoulder bells are some of the most frustrating things I've ever seen in my life. I don't know who okayed that, who thought that was a good idea, but they suck. We'll get to that real soon, but I do want to look at height. So the box said that he was 6.2 inches, and he is 6 and 1 8 inches tall. So if you wanted to get picky, yes, he's a little short, but it's okay. It's, it's not the end of the world. But let's take a look at his head and face first. If you want to call this a face, the red eyes, very cool. I love the black and gray around the eyes. The mouth looks fantastic. I love all the fine detail in there. Yeah, that's just cool. And that's what the top of his head looks like. Got this going on. Yeah, I love that. And then the head wrap has these cutouts for his ears, I guess. Yeah, I love that. And then it's just some wrinkles in the back. And from the neck down, he kind of looks like a miniature Grievous, you know, as far as the all the lines, the cuts. But it looks cool. But up here, you have all this tucked up in there. That is just all kinds of goodies. Love that. The chest looks nice. I love the red there. Some nice detail there. Got some grime and some dirt and some weathering. Even got some stuff tucked up in there. And all this, all these mechanical bits. It's just awesome. Shoulder bells. <laughs> They'll wind up on the floor, but they look great. Arms look good. Got some scratches over here. The forearms are really cool. Love that. Hands. Got this little armor plate on the back. He kind of has two thumbs. Pretty neat. And then this arm is the same. Okay, pretty much the same. The scratches and all, oh, that thing's trying to fall off already. You stay put. Uh, yeah, pretty much the same on the right arm. And the cape, so the cape is in, it's like layered. It's too, I can't grab it. Uh, two pieces, but it's nice. And I am loving these designs up here. That's just cool. I'm not a fan of the little puffy bit right there. I mean, it's in the back, but it does want to just poop. It wants to puff up right there. But overall, I do love the way the cape lays. It bunches up a little bit right there. looks nice. So this is a uh, Kalish uh, cape, is, is what I found out. It's supposed to be a nod to the Kalish warriors, you know, Grievous, you know, these designs and just the overall look of it. That, that's where this cape comes from. Yeah, it's a pretty cool cape. I, I do like it. And for legs, oh, let's look at his little crotch area first. This is pretty cool. Let's spin him around. I forgot to look at the back. That's what his back looks like. Really looks like Grievous back there. I yeah, love that. Yeah, the legs are very cool. Got these little armor bits there. And then this little skinny part. Some more armor. Some weathering. The joints look good. I love that. And some dirt and funk down here. And some big old feet. The feet look great, actually. And I love this. Yeah, from head to toe. It is a super cool looking droid. And as far as articulation, so this figure has some really strange articulation points. I mean, they're just in places where you wouldn't expect, but it's it's neat. It's just different. But the head, okay, you see that little bit in his chest? So that will move. 
you put a thumb on that, the head can also uh, move a little bit. So that's kind of cool. He's got some very good tilt. Not up, well, yeah, he does have some up and down. So he's actually pretty mobile in the head. Now, arms. This thing wants to pop off already. Let's go for the left arm. So if you raise the arm up, I'm sure most of you already know this. Yeah, that just flies off. It's two little pegs, and the shoulder bell itself is very squishy, so they don't engage in those little holes very tightly. Terrible design. I don't know who thought that was okay, but it is just an idiotic design. I'm just going to leave that off for now. But the shoulder itself is on a ball, so you have all kinds of movement in there. The chest piece there will kind of articulate with it. It will float a little bit, but you've got... You know, essentially butterfly joints, plus some up and down, plus some rotation all the way around. I mean, it's it's a pretty cool design. And as far as rotation, it is right above the elbow joint, okay? And then the elbows get mm, just a hair past 90. That was a little disappointing. And then down here, his forearm can rotate right there, and then the wrist can also rotate. And then the hinges are side to side in this configuration, but you can rotate that around, rotate the wrist around, and then you have an up and down hinge. So that is kind of cool. You know, that there goes the right one. Okay, I'm just going to leave these off for now. Yeah, there's the, there's the right arm. Same thing. Yeah, the shoulders are on a ball. That is pretty slick. I just hate this. As far as midsection, you have some, some movement like mid-torso. There's not a lot. I mean, there's some pretty decent side to side and some swivel right there, but forward and back. Well, let's take that back. Back is okay. Forward, not a whole lot. Okay. It's just weird. Now legs, they go out only that far because this part there just runs into that. And the hips are on like a double ball. Okay. You do have some, some pivot there as well as, you know, in and out, I guess you could say. And then front and back. Really kind of bizarre hip. And the knees, they get way up to there and they can't hyperextend. Now legs up, okay, they can get all the way up to there. Yeah, and they can go all the way back. Same thing because it's on a, it's just a ball. There is no rotation at the knee or there. It's just up here. You know, you have some pivot. And then for feet, now you do have some rotation at the ankle. You do have some up and down. Okay, they go up that far. They go down all the way to there, and then you also have some swivel at the ankle. So the articulation on the Magna Guard is pretty good overall. I mean, I do wish there was a little more range in the elbows. These things right here, they're just dumb. I mean, it's like you just kind of have to get him posed and put them on and just leave them. Because as soon as you start monkeying with the figure, they fly off. Here, let me pop these silly things back on. This is a real joy. So that little hole will line up with that peg. And just do the same on the other side. Super frustrating. And moving on to accessories. So here's one of the Electro Staffs, and I really like this one. The clear plastic is just really neat, and I love all the detail on the end. That's nice. Then the shaft of it is just gray. Yeah, not much going on there. That's what the other end looks like. Just more of the same, but yeah, this one's nice. I love this one. And that's what the other one looks like. It's a little different, but I like it. A little bit of some stuff there. Okay, then the, you know, once again, the shaft is just gray. That is what the other end looks like. Identical. Yeah, this one's pretty cool too. All right, so I went on ahead and put this staff in his hands, and it looks nice. It's a little bit of a chore to get him in there. You know, you can't just slide it through because of this is a little big, but the fingers are a little bendy. You know, you could just sort of snake it through his fingers, and it looks great. It is very stable. Even in one hand, it's not going anywhere. And also, I just want to bring up he stands pretty well. I don't know if it's because the feet are big, but he stands up nicely. But moving on to these little electro bits, these are pretty cool. I mean, we've seen stuff like this before. So these go on this staff very well. On this one, you kind of just have to pick a side. You know, you can just sort of set them on there or just kind of snake them in there like that. It looks a little weird. Now, this one does have a little bit of an opening, right? there, but it just doesn't look quite right. So I'm thinking maybe, you know, this staff is supposed to represent like the powered down version. And then you can have the electro bits on that one. 
And that is what that looks like, and I like it. <laughs> Once they're on, they stay on pretty well. And there's the staff in just one hand, and again, it is very stable. It is not sliding around at all. Yeah, very secure in just one hand. <laughs> he stands up right away. As much as I would love to like put this guy in various poses, I don't want to deal with these. So here, I think I'm just going to put it in two hands. Hang on, stand by. All right, there. That's not a bad pose. And again, if you wanted this one in his hands, that's going to look just like that. You know, you can use your imagination. But just to avoid fooling with these shoulder bells and, you know, I'm just going to leave that one in his hand for now. So let's go stick him on the shelf and let's see what he looks like there. And here we are, and pff, he looks good. What a good looking figure. I mean, despite having some really funky shoulders, the figure looks incredible. And as you see, I have him on a Landspeeder Luke stand, but I did not need the foot plate. He stands fine, so I'll just save this for somebody else. He's pretty stable. I guess it's those big old feet, but man, what an awesome looking figure. He poses pretty well, and I think I like that staff. I mean, this one is very cool, okay, with the clear ends. I do love this one. It's just the little electrified bits go on that one a little bit better. Or maybe I just need to play with this one some more. But this is fine. I mean, you can imagine if you put this one in his hands, it's going to look the same, okay? It's just a matter of preference, you know, whatever staff you want to use. But, man, I am blown away at this guy. I'm, I'm trying really hard to overlook the shoulder bells because they are super frustrating. And because of that, I think I'm just going to end the video here. You know, I don't want to move him again. <laughs> but overall, I mean, it is a killer looking figure. The cape is nice. And you could probably take that cape off if you wanted to. I just left it on for this video. But from head to toe, it is a nice looking figure. I'm very happy I bought it. But just like always, I want to hear from you guys. So comment below and let me know what you think of the Magna Guard from the Clone Wars. And if you enjoy videos on Star Wars The Black Series, please consider dropping a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and don't forget to turn on notifications. I'd certainly appreciate it, and I just thank you guys so much for watching. See you all next time.